I... So imagine that you are a head of a development organization, and many of you actually are, indeed. And uh, so you are listening to a pitch from uh, three different teams. And the idea that they are pitching for is an effective support package for the poor to be able to increase their income. And the first team says that you should invest in cows because cows generate very high return on investment. But the second team says that, no, no, no. Actually, you should give cash because with cash, the poor can make their own decisions on what to invest. And the third group says, well, actually, you should invest in chickens because you can reach even more people with the same amount of money that you're providing for cows, for example. So how do you decide? This, I think, is a very important question for all of us because we want to make a maximum impact in a very, very effective manner. So a sensible answer might be to say that, well, let's compare these options and see which one would generate the highest return on investment. And based on that, you will make a decision. It sounds no-brainer, right? But are we, as a development sector, doing that, really? Testing and comparing different options with evidence, or let's call experimentation, doesn't seem to happen all that often in the development sector. But if you think about it, experimentation is everywhere. We humans want to understand how the world works, and we want to understand how we can get the result that we want. And take an example. This is my 60-year-old daughter, and she often conducts an experiment. So she'll come to me and ask her questions like this. Can I watch something on my iPad? And if I say no, she will go to her mother and ask the exact same question to see if she will get the more satisfactory answer. So through this experiment, she's figuring out how she can get what she wants. And experimentation seems to be also a common place in the business sector. So suppose that you are renewing your company's website in a big way. And before you make a huge investment, you might want to compare, right? So this design A generated this percentage of the click rate. And the other design created, generated even higher click rates. So based on this test, you might want to make a decision on which one you want to invest in. So this experimentation is a commonplace in business and in our everyday life, but it does not seem to be the norm in the development sector. And this is despite the fact that there's so much at stake in the development sector because it touches the lives and well-beings of so many people in living in a very difficult conditions. And I must admit that I myself was not thinking about experiment until recently. So the large development programs are often designed without really comparing different options and without really looking at the evidence. And the reason for this might be because of the way that planning and funding process are set up. So funders often ask the recipient organization to spell out all the detailed activities for the next four years. And there's also a cumbersome grant amendment process if you want to change the project design, which is quite important when you are experimenting. But the good news is that this is starting to change. There's more and more interest in experimentation and evidence-based decisions. And pioneering work is being done by institutions such as MIT's JPAL or Innovations for Poverty Action. So this is an example. So out of 2,400 candidates to become a community health workers, 300 were recruited through two different methods. And one recruiting message 
emphasize the social incentive. So basically, if you join this community health workers group, you will be able to serve the community. So it's a social incentive. And the other group was recruited through more of a career incentive. So if you join this community health workers group, you actually can develop your own skills. And after a year, a study was conducted and compared this, the performance of these two groups of community health workers. What they found was that those who were recruited through the career incentive messages performed a lot better. They organized 30% more uh, household visit, and they also organized twice as many community meetings compared to its counterpart. Now, some of the practitioners here may ask, right, this is quite important, but we are doers, we are not researchers. So what do we do? I think the answer lies in a lean experimentation. So let me rewind a bit. Seven years ago, I left the United Nations and then started my own organization called Copernic. And Copernic is named after Nicholas Copernicus, who himself was very fond of experimentation. And just like he changed the way that we see the world, we wanted to um, uh, 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 the change the, the way that development assistance is delivered. And one of the things that we have been doing is to distribute a very simple yet life-changing technologies to the poor in the last mile. So technologies such as clean cook stoves, or water filters, or solar lights. And these are distributed through a sales agent that we recruit and train. And after a while, we noticed that there is a huge difference in terms of the sales performance among the sales agent. And we wanted to find out what is contributing to that, because we wanted to reach more people in a more effective way. So we took a sample of a, a high-performing sales agent and compared against the general uh, overall sales agent. And we looked at the things like gender or age or the previous background in business. And none of these were differentiating uh, between the high-performing sales agent and an ordinary sales agent. But when we looked at the mobility, we found an interesting correlation. So those agents who have easy access to motorbike were selling twice as many technologies compared to those without access to the motorbike. So through this very simple experiment, we changed our recruitment strategies of the sales agent. And this took us only three days of our staff time. Another experiment that, uh, another example of a lean experimentation we conduct is around grain storage. This is sorghum, uh, which is the fifth uh, common, uh, most common grain in the world. And this is becoming quite popular in the eastern part of Indonesia, where many of our activities are, are concentrated around. And this becomes very popular because it grows without much water, so it's appropriate for the dry area, and it's very, very nutritious. But the challenge is that after the harvest, uh, farmers typically store these grains in a very simple bag like this. This is just woven plastic bags. And soon, this grain will be infested with weevils. And up to 70% of the grain is eaten up. So it is a huge waste of resources and also huge loss of potential income for these smallholder farmers. So we wanted to do something about it. And we did some quick research and found that maize has a very same issue. And some organizations are advocating for an airtight or hermetic uh, storage method. And we were not sure if the same solution would work 
with sorghum because it's after all it's a different grain. So we wanted to test if this hermetic storage indeed in decreases the number of weevils. The idea of the hermetic storage is that you, you basically limit the, the, the flow of oxygen, so eventually the weevil will run out of oxygen, so they will die. And when they die, of course, they will stop eating the grain. So we did this experiment. So we had this bag of sorghum in a traditional bag, and the other one is contain, uh, use the hermetic bag inside the traditional bag. So it's, it's double, um, doubly sealed. And this each contained 25 kilogram of sorghum grain. And we put them side by side for three months. And literally, we, we go back every month and have three scoops out of each, and then spread it, and then literally count the number of weevils by hand. And after three months, as expected, this traditional bag was infested with weev weevils. There are close to 400 weevils. It took a long time to count. And while this hermetic bag had less than a third of the weevils. Now, this is not the perfect solution, but it is reducing the number of, of weevils significantly. And this experimentation cost less than $2,000 for us. So I'm sharing these very seemingly mundane and simple examples because I believe that even the complex development programs can be broken down into simple activities and then can be tested through lean experimentation. So the message today is that we should be doing more of experimentation, be it rigorous or lean, and really trying to find a smart solutions that really work. And if we do that collectively, soon we will be able to achieve the sustainable development goals more effectively, and we will also be able to answer the question of which one it is, cows, cash, or chickens, that are most effective in increasing the income of the poor. Thank you.